Here are a few of the facts I uncovered in the course of my research that I describe in the book. There are more African-American adults under correctional control today, in prison or jail, on probation or parole, than were enslaved in 1850, a decade before the Civil War began. In 2004, more black men were disenfranchised than in 1870, the year the 15th Amendment was ratified, prohibiting laws that explicitly deny the right to vote on the basis of race. Today, of course, they're disenfranchised due to felon disenfranchisement laws. During the Jim Crow era, poll taxes and literacy tests kept African Americans from the poll. Well, today, felon disenfranchisement laws are accomplishing what poll taxes and literacy tests ultimately could not. A black child born today has less of a chance of being raised by both parents than a black child born during slavery. This is due in large part to the mass incarceration of black men. There was a great article published not too long ago about this in The Economist magazine entitled, How the Mass Incarceration of Black Men Harms Black Women. And in it, it described that you know, the majority of black women in the United States are unmarried, including 70% uh, of black professional women. And that this is due largely to the mass incarceration of black men, which takes them out of the dating pool in the years that they'd be most likely to commit to a partner, and to a family. But what's worse is that by branding them felons and criminals through the system, they are rendered permanently unemployable for the most part in the legal job market virtually guaranteeing that they will cycle in and out of prison for the rest of their lives, making long-term relationship commitments extraordinarily difficult. Mass incarceration has devastated black families to a degree comparable to slavery. Now in some major urban areas, including right here in Chicago, more than half of working age African American men have criminal records and are thus subject to legalized discrimination for the rest of their lives. In fact, it was reported in 2004 that here in Chicago, if you take into account prisoners who are excluded from poverty statistics and unemployment statistics, you know, thus great, you know, greatly masking the severity of racial inequality in the United States, but if you take into account prisoners as of 2004, nearly 80% of working age African American men in the Chicago area have criminal records. Now these men are part of a growing undercast, not class, caste, a group of people defined largely by race who are relegated to a permanent second class status by law. Now, I find that when I give talks about this issue, a good percentage of the folks there are tempted to say, what are you talking about? Mass incarceration is not a system of racial control, it's a system of crime control. You know, if black people would just stop committing so many crimes, they wouldn't have to worry about going to prison and being stripped of their basic civil and human rights. But again, in Dr. King's honor, I'm committed to telling the truth, the whole truth about this. And the truth is, our prison population has quintupled, not doubled or tripled, quintupled for reasons that have stunningly little to do with crime or crime rates. We now have the highest rate of incarceration in the world, a penal system unprecedented in world history, but this is not, I repeat, not due to crime rates. Crime rates have fluctuated over the past 30 years. Going up, going down. Today, as bad as they are in some cities, including Chicago, nationwide, crime rates are at historical lows. But incarceration rates have consistently soared. Most criminologists and sociologists today will admit Crime rates and incarceration rates in the United States, they've moved independently of one another. Incarceration rates have soared regardless of whether crime is going up or down in any given community or the nation as a whole. 